Well, the truth episodes, they're finally here. We break down the quarterback position. Which players could you rely on? Hint, it's not a lot of them. And which players do we like moving forward? Don't miss a minute of it. Subscribe right here and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, January 18th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, back with you. You know who won't be back? Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's fair. That's right, just as Jason prophesied. Well, yeah, I mean, it was it was tough to predict, yeah. but we, sometimes we get some things right. So we begin today with uh, our first truth episode of the off season, which is always a very anticipated set of episodes. We are going to take a deep dive into the performance of the quarterback position this year, and the truth can be hard to hear sometimes. You're not gonna, you're not gonna like the truth. Yeah, you may today. not like I, it. I, I will say this: going through preparing all these docs. Looking at how we score these uh, these truth metrics, I did not like it. I was like, "This is no." You were in physical discomfort. I was super upset. I'm like, "No, it, this is this is wrong." Lie to me. Yeah, this like, exactly. This want, can't be the truth. Yeah, but uh, we'll 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 get into it here in a in a couple minutes. But it's uh it's a, it's a little unsettling. Let, let me ask you this, and and you can just tease it because we will. We'll break it all down. Did anything you discovered in your journeys? that we're going to share, change how you'll draft the quarterback position next year? I think it did, yeah. Okay. so that'll be. But I'm not saying yet. Yeah. He oh. thinks it did. We'll find out. Yeah. Uh, a couple things at the top. Welcome in. We want to thank everybody that's been supporting the show by heading over to footclanvote.com. There's some there's award. a new one. There's Mike is. No, there's a new one. This is yeah. important stuff. This one is actually important. Well, they're, they're all important. Cause no, they're not. They're, <laughs> they're all important because. I love to win anything. It, uh, it sustains my my life meter, and got to get some wins in there. So there is the the sports podcast awards. Though that that fan vote is still going, but the the FSGA, which is essentially one of the two like large fantasy sports associations, they do a best social media award that has never not been won. By the fantasy footballers. And we don't want to start yeah. losing now. Yeah. So you must go to footclanvote.com and click on that vote now. Continue for the, the FSGA. The dynasty? Yeah, but look, the Foot Clan's the, undefeated. You guys want you you're listening. You yeah. want to be a loser? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Put it on them. Yeah, you don't want to be a loser. Go win. <laughs> Nothing better than shaming your fans. Yeah. No. I'm saying they <laughs> you guys are undefeated. You stay undefeated. This is my pep talk. Uh, and where do they go, Jason? Footclanvote.com. All right. All right. Quick question of the day. It's a good one. I'm curious your answer. Uh, which NFL team this year ended up being the most different from how you envisioned them before the 2023 season? And um, I think it's a good question. I, I personally tried to go away from the, you know. From just Jason's answer? The surprise team because um, – you know, I, I view, I mean, that's fine. A surprise team fits the bill for that, for sure. I wanted to pick a team that was, that we had kind of forecasted the way that they would operate and a team that kind of flipped that on its head. And it still ended up doing a lot of things for fantasy managers, but in a different way. And for me, that was the Dallas Cowboys because a lot of the offseason was dominated by the transition from a high flying Kellen Moore. Why would you get rid of this guy offense? Right, a lot of uh, negative things were said about Mike McCarthy and what we expect the office well, be to be because he was telling us some things. He was like the quote of, "I gotta, we, we gotta keep the offense out there," or whatever it was. Like we're scoring too fast. We're scoring too fast, so we're making our defense tired. In kind of 
letting on that we're no we're going to be a high t run the ball as many times as we well yeah i mean can. a high t they brought in brian cornelius schottenheimer uh as the is that the middle name for that it, that oh, okay. that's, all right yeah. that's all a right. kyle special right there yeah. thank you kyle um and uh i mean he's he's a run the ball guy yeah. he's a tony pollard system so so all the bullets on the on the you know outline of the dallas cowboys in the offseason said you know is tony pollard would be given every opportunity i think we were a little surprised that they didn't bring in a you know another bigger back to compliment and do the zeke role when he departed but there was a lot of concern about Dak's potential production and C.D. Lamb's involvement in the passing offense, and whether Brandon Cooks made any sense because they wouldn't throw the ball as much. And and it, you know, real really it was the opposite. I mean, once it, Pollard was one of the biggest busts. I mean, I think if our Footy Award didn't go to Eckler, it was going to Pollard in terms of early draft capital investment yep, invested fair. in a running back. And then if you had the Dak C.D. stack from the middle of the season on. You were probably in your title game, and and you likely won it. So, uh, from a passing success standpoint, it was much better. Uh, consolidated to what Dak could do and CD could do in the offense, and to me, that was, you know, different than we envisioned it. It was definitely different. I'm now remembering the whole the way that the the McCarthy Dallas Cowboys era started. It started on the foundation of a lie. Do you guys remember this? Where. He like his first press. Conference, oh, oh yes, I remember. When he all watching he told, all the film. <laughs> yeah, he told Jerry Jones he had broke down all the film, and he gets he signs on the line, gets all the cash secured, and then his first media appearance, he's like, "Oh, I didn't watch the film at all." Yeah, he, he goes, "I <laughs> have oh, to, you're a, you're a dirty liar." I have to tell the truth. I I lied about that. Yeah, that so, was so we should have known at that point. McCarthy, known liar. So yeah. then, then, real quick, before you give me your team, then just to follow up there with McCarthy. Do you want him to stay? Yes. Like as a fantasy I, manager, we do that. For we fantasy, want that, right? I yeah, I think okay. I do. Yeah, I mean, big you, you, McCarthy fans you, over you, there. You, you too. You've got to give credit. I'm hesitant, I mean, but yeah, yeah, the, their their offense was uh, great until the playoffs. So uh, the team that I went with is a lot of people's team, right? Like the Houston Texans were a huge surprise. America's team. <laughs> America's team. That's oh, right. Man. From uh, from best Texas. team in Texas. Yeah. Uh, they, How does it feel? <laughs> but the way that it was surprising and the preseason prognostication, really the only player, if you look at ADP, that anyone wanted from the Texans was Damian Pierce. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the only one that's going to do anything. Whoops. Yeah, it, he was was da the, it was Damian Pierce and no one else. He was the only one that didn't do anything. <laughs> Everyone else was great. I mean, obviously, CJ Stroud was a revelation, but Nico Collins oh, yeah. was great. Tank Dell, yes, sir. Noah Brown, sure. Yeah. Dalton yep. Schultz, Dalton Schultz, heck yeah. Devin Singletary, just not the only player that you drafted in Damian Pierce, and and you know the historical data on a rookie quarterback. Oh, since two thousand four, seventy percent of the time they don't have a single top thirty six wide receiver, so you kind of avoided these receiving options in in Nico Collins and Tank Dell, at least you know, in, in uh, high draft capital situations, it was so the opposite. C.J. Stroud's the first rookie ever to support two top 15 wide receivers in points per game. Tank Dell and Nico Collins were just stars. Mm -hmm. And I you, don't know how much is them. C.J. Stroud led the NFL in yards per game. Yeah, I mean, he, he I mean, was that, unbelievable. That's a right. rookie. As a rookie. Yeah. This is, I mean, for better or for worse, with the rookie season that Justin Herbert had and then the rookie season that C.J. Stroud had, like people are going to take their shots at some of these rookie quarterback situations, which they probably should. Because you know the price you paid for Nico Collins or Tank Dell or Dalton Schultz was nothing. Well, the question is just, will you be able to pay that same price and take the shot? Or will yeah, this well, kind of yeah. success mean that people are going – that the consensus will try to take the shot, which means that it costs more? What do you think, Mike? Who is the uh, the team that was the most different from what you envisioned? So they they weren't necessarily the most different, but they were they exceeded the expectation. Like every, everything that you thought about the Lions was there was there were options there. You know, uh, Jameer Gibbs was well, like a fourth rounder. Montgomery was a guy that we liked all off season. Who was going in the seventh or eighth as a this is a late round running back that you can get who should be he'll have some spike weeks. And, but it was like the skill players on Detroit were 
incredible. They weren't just good for fantasy football. They were fantastic. Jameer Gibbs, you know, once the breakout happened, was one of the best running backs in the league. Both him and Montgomery were top 12 running backs in points per game. Amon Ra went from like, oh, he's a real, he's a Keenan Allen consistent guy. If I'm in a PPR, I'm so stoked to have Amon Ra as my wide receiver too. He went from that to a true dominant number one wide receiver who was winning weeks. I mean, he was nominated for the playoff king. I mean, yet again, this is, I think we should just expect this now from Amon Ra at the end of the year that you have that. Sam Laporta, the tight end one as a rookie, that's essentially impossible. We had some really impossible stuff happen between Stroud and Laporta this week or this year. And then Jared Goff was what you expected, but he was actually a bit better, a bit better. There was a few more spike weeks and some really heavy spike weeks that you could foreshadow on, well, on a more consistent basis. So they, they impressed me. And so since 2000, this is the only team with two top 12 fantasy running backs, a top five wide receiver, and a top five tight end. The Saints back in the day were close, but this was a an output that you would hope for, but just exceeded all expectations. And we'll talk more about golf because we'll be talking about quarterback truth today and on our next episode as well. So quick uh, jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. First episode since we, we we have the opportunity to talk about the Monday night games. Buffalo handled Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Mike Tomlin uh, exited quickly <laughs> from the press conference. Oh, uh, yeah. So I'll respond to that. So Pittsburgh actually, I thought they did they did better than I thought they throwing would. that interception early in the game in the red zone in the end zone. Yes, disrupted their real opportunity to. To and steal that one. Well, we had we had a fourteen point victory for Buffalo, and it was, I mean, it was a seven point game. There was a chance that Pittsburgh could have come back, but Buffalo pulled away. The I've seen the reactions to Mike Tomlin's uh, rapid exit from smoke bomb from the uh, the the post game media conference there, which we have part of the news here is that Mike Tomlin has informed the team he will be back for two thousand twenty four. So those rumblings are gone, but I saw a lot of people. Getting onto uh, getting onto Tomlin for leaving with that question, but you're like, he's a human being who just had a devastating playoff loss, and you're like, hey, what are you gonna do next year? And it's like, I I get you, you're a professional, so you you need to be able to handle those types of questions, but stop asking those questions. I those are garbage questions. Those are fine. No, those Jason are, has a different opinion. I'm totally those on the other side. They're garbage. No, they're 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 doing their job. They're reporting. They want to know and it's like that to me is such a just natural question. I would have asked the question. I would have been like, are you back next year? How do you feel? Like why would why is that an off limits to me, question? To me it, 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 it whether you think it's dumb or not. It's dumb to not expect it. That's what I would say. Yes. And he had I, coach I with, with a that. long tenure that knows his own contract yeah. should not be surprised at what they receive relationally to that. I mean, Belichick knew he would receive those questions, and I believe he just said something like, you know, yeah, you know, we just got done with this game, and, you know, he just kind of – he played the he yes. played the game. That's, that's Tomlin what... was overtly angry, and I, I actually don't know what what came before. I don't know if that was the third time he got that question – or if he got it before the game, or whatever. So, I give him a pass because whatever you know, he's he's Mike Tomlin. Maybe the question didn't hit at the right time, but you got to be. You can't be shocked that they're asking. No, don't be shocked, but find better questions. That's what I'm like, saying. Like like how Tampa will deal with the weather in Detroit. <laughs> Like oh, would man, you that would you so say that sad. that's a good question that's to a, ask? That's I would a say great on question. the foundation, it seemed like a well researched and well intended question. Ooh. There was just there one was small, there was one small just a teeny tiny detail that was that, missed. That, that missed. Yeah. If you uh, if you are not familiar with what we are alluding to, Oops. the question was asked to Todd Bowles about how they're going to prepare for the cold weather in yeah. Detroit. Who plays in a dome and has played in a dome forever? It's like My uh, his answer was, yeah. was was so funny because he's 
not only does he kind of roll his eyes at it and be like, you know, they're playing a dome, but then when he specifically is like, we'll only be outside for like 30 seconds when we go from the bus to the inside. We'll, pro- we'll be okay. I, I don't think we're going to prepare. So those are the kind I of feel questions so bad. that you... Uh, you no, no, I want better, better questions. Better than that. Yeah. Those are the type of questions I would be asking. <laughs> oh, my I'd be like, oh, yeah, whoops. They're not active. How, Got do you, it. how do you survive that question though in your in your journalism career you just gotta you move on. do you exit immediately do you just say mm, you are goodbye you are very thankful that bulls was kind yeah yeah he, he was he was like he's, he could have just destroyed that person i'm that was a turtle shirt yeah, situation yeah, that was. Was a, yeah just like please, <laughs> please hide in your shirt all right uh tampa bay just absolutely Wanted it more is what I'm going to say. Philadelphia, the the end of the season from a ten and one team to losing six of seven, they lose thirty two to nine. Uh, there was an energy from Green Bay this week against Dallas. There was an energy from Tampa Bay against Philadelphia that those NFC T- East teams they couldn't match it this week. You know, Tampa tackled better. Tampa, you know, they fought for the extra yard. Like I give so much credit to Todd Bowles, who talk about like a a short stick, so to speak. When you sure. lose, you lose Brady. You've had these years of, of, you know, in New York and just opportunities to win that you couldn't, you didn't have personnel. Their amount of dead cap was astronomical. So it, you know, it's a huge testament to the coaching staff in Tampa preparing the team to, uh, you know, everybody involved. Baker Mayfield, congratulations on kind of a maturation process here. You know, this is not the same guy that we saw a year ago when he looked like what Bryce Young looked like in Carolina. I mean, he was brought in just to compete with Kyle Trask. He wasn't brought in to be the starter, and he just owned it. He owned this season. He's still playing in the playoffs. And it's funny because I saw people complaining about the blowouts in the playoffs this week and, like, what are you going to do about this NFL? You know, these are – it's like two of these blowouts was the – non-favorite teams what do you mean what are you gonna do about it this is great competition and it's great tv when you when you're sitting there and you're going what is happening Mm -hmm. i i think i tweeted like the nfl is great for a lot of reasons but one of them is that these things can happen any given week you know the the line between a good team and an underdog like it just seems like any given week somebody can break through and these were trouncings yeah and i'm with jason though they were Despite the score and you knowing the game is over, it was still fascinating. Like what the 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 machine of the Green Bay Packers offense against the the Dallas defense, which saw a bunch of you know like the super sharps breaking down personnel and just how badly uh, the Dallas Cowboys defense got out coached uh, from a personnel standpoint. Of you like why is Aaron Jones? Just every time he touches the ball, he's getting at least five yards. And it was, well, Green Bay recognized that Dallas kept staying small against their big guys. And and just how effective and incredible Green Bay was. And the same for for Tampa. Like it was it was a really fun to watch. And and you know, we'll get into it. We got a whole off season of shows, but the Philadelphia situation is gonna be one that is <laughs> tumultuous at best. They have so many free agents. Jason Kelsey is leaving. Oh, yeah. That that relationship, that departure, the tush push, and all of that, um, which got stopped. It got is that stopped. Why, is that why he's retiring? Oh, it was like once they stop it, yeah. I'm out. Yeah, like I'm, I'm I, maybe. It's like fine. I'm not playing. Did anymore. he walk off the field then and actually turn in the paperwork? <laughs> I believe Tampa Dear also stopped God, the tush. they stopped us. I, I think I think Tampa stopped it. The last time, too. It was Did like they? week three One or whenever them? they played. Yeah. So they've got the secret. Uh, apparently, the secret is Vita Vea. <laughs> Have a big, Honestly, gigantic, that's, that's... awesome <laughs> nose tackle. Like... Yeah, the secret to the to completing it successfully was, was Jason Kelsey. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, he'll be gone. There's a lot of negative energy the around. The fans want the coach gone. Around the team. And Jalen Hurts had a huge drop-off in the back yeah. half of the year. Uh, so it, it, it'll be a huge discussion. It will not be a... I think an automatic assumption that this offense will just get back to form. No Shane Steichen. It hurt. Um, played a big role. A.J. Brown deletes social media stuff for it, the Eagles. It will be unsurprising to me in whatever two months' time if the, the the report comes out, 
oh, Jalen Hurts was actually way more hurt than we thought. That's true. It's possible. He did not run. One for five in that game. Uh, the Saints fired their offensive coordinator. I've spoken to some Saints fans that I know. They do not feel this is enough. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, no no Saints fan I know wants Dennis Allen as the coach. No. but he nor, coach. nor do any of the offensive players that just usurped him. But um, that's that's what happened. Are they going to go full Lord of the Flies down there? Just let the let the kids like run they it? fire yeah. the coach, but they don't hire one. No, I'm saying no. The coach is like yeah, the coach is there, but just what if it's Winston? The team takes over. Winston takes over. Winston Jameis is the head coach. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I mean some some people what, just want to watch the world burn. Jameis, what's the play call? Chuck it, <laughs> <laughs> ja- Jameis. It's first and goal on the one. Chuck it. Did you hear <laughs> what I said? Air it out. Yeah. You see those Olave unrealized air yards? We're about to double them. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Uh, any other news, Brooks? You got anything else for us? No, sir. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with the truth. You know, a- after that break... Uh, I'm not positive Winston would be a great head coach. Not positive. What? I don't. Just an I offensive coordinator. I, I hear I it loud know. and yeah, clear. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's take a look at that quarterback position. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. I'm glad to see we did not upgrade the <laughs> graphic from last year that you were so upset with. I don't see what the problem is. You know, Brooks did come to me and ask if I wanted it to be <laughs> to be fixed. Andy's never looked better. And That's I true. said, just just roll with it. Just do it. Just go with it. Oh, dude, put that on the uh, the list of possible shame ideas. Ooh! Old-timey judge. <laughs> yeah, that's good. What do they call it? Is that a, a barrister? No, that's like a lawyer in the UK. Is a barrister? Is that, am I right? Am I on to something? Yeah, that's we, a, that's we a, looked this up yeah. last year and I think had about Every a year we have the same discussion. discussion. That's yeah. a bear. Thanks, Brooks. <laughs> All right. Let's get into it. The top 10 quarterbacks from 2023. The truth about the position, about how they affected your fantasy team, about the investment you made in each round on quarterbacks. And some league-wide passing trends. We always like to start this section with kind of a, a lay of the land, um, a survey of what's going on. It was less efficient for pass. The defenses are getting you know, too good. Passers. Well, yeah, I you, mean, the, you also ahead. had a lot of quarterback injuries this yeah, year that really played a part of it. Uh, there, this was the lowest touchdown rate since 2011. Gross. We often look at that individually at quarterbacks that maybe out you know, performed or mm-hmm. underperformed. Uh, this was the lowest rate, 4.09% since 2011. The lowest fantasy points per pass attempt since 2011. Gross. And the fantasy points per pass attempts have, uh, it's dropped for three consecutive seasons uh, since 2020. And, you know, the overarching question is, did you feel that for fantasy? Did you notice that for fantasy? Yeah, I, I think that you did, but really it came I, – I believe it came on the back of injuries, um, whether it was injuries to to wide receivers, like when Mike Williams and Keenan Allen got banged up for, for Herbert, or you know when uh, quarterbacks got injured and you lost Kirk Cousins and Herbert. and um, it, The backups that came in, some of them, like a Jake Browning, was okay, but for mm-hmm. the most part, it really crushed fantasy this year. The difficult part with the backups that performed is that nobody bought in in week one. Most people didn't buy in for week two. And then when you could buy into one of them, it was like, is the starter back? <laughs> you know, it, it was. it's hard to nail those when it comes to streaming quarterbacks. There were 67 quarterbacks that started an NFL game this year and 43 different quarterbacks that had a, had a top 12 performance. 67 quarterbacks started. That is... That's just insane. It's too many. That's way too many. So, I mean, we had the whole uh, Tyson, Bilbo, Bajent uh, part of the uh, of the year. Bailey Zappi got starts. Mitch Trubisky was in there. Danny DeVito. Even Tommy DeVito. And then Carson Wentz even got a start. <laughs> That's right. He did. For Jason oh, and his great bet. Mm-hmm. You must feel so dumb, Mike. 
Uh, or do you still believe in Matt Ryan? I feel it's not really dumb. It's just it's a disappointment that the NFL would allow that to happen. Well, you know, you lost. Jason, uh, you you uh, you want to give everybody an overview of kind of what, like a general reminder of what we mean by the truth of these players. Yeah, so what we do, you know, a lot of times we use the word consistency, but it's more than just consistency because we do factor in how often they had great games versus good games versus average games versus bust games versus super bust games. So we take a look at basically different thresholds of points for these quarterbacks, you know, a great game is more than 26 points. A bust game is fewer than 15 points in four-point pe- four uh, passing touchdown leagues. A uh, super bust game is fewer than nine points. You're single digits. You're just crushing someone. And and we kind of score them individually based up upon um, how it looks historically, what is helpful for fantasy. And it's also worth noting that we don't, um, we don't penalize. So when, when we're looking at these numbers and these rankings, we don't penalize missed games that you knew the player wasn't going to play. Like if if the you know if if you couldn't start them in fantasy, then even though obviously them missing the game hurt you, you know it was a prepared damage. Exactly, and and so this is when these quarterbacks played when they were started and you started them in a fantasy. How helpful were they really? And I'm going to jump real quick, just a, a smidge ahead to give you the the best example of quarterbacks as a whole and what really upset me when I was looking at the truth doc. I'm going to talk about Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson finished the season as the quarterback three. And when I was doing this, I you know we, we do this every year and we look at the, the truth of these quarterbacks. I couldn't wait to see how bad Lamar Jackson was in the truth score because he was very inconsistent. He had a lot of games that let you down. And in the actual score that we do every single year on the season, he was the the fourth best quarterback in fantasy. The truth is he was still really, really good for fantasy. Relative to other options. Relative to the other options because everyone was inconsistent this year minus two guys. I mean, it was a bad year for consistency for quarterbacks. That, That was the most shocking telling truth to me um at at the whole the whole quarterback position which is why we lead off with Josh Allen. Yeah, he makes it easy to, oh, to have that discussion. I mean, he's he finished at uh, number 1. He was number 1 in the first half, number 1 in the second half. Uh he's been number 1 3 of 4 years and the one year he wasn't, he was number 2. And so from a consistency standpoint, Josh Allen is the truth. <laughs> I his, mean, his splits are great. Like it, if he's facing Home road. A top sixteen, yeah. bottom sixteen. No, he's still giving you, you know, an average of about twenty six points per game. Home road. He's he's not a Jared Goff where you you were like, oh oh, road game can't start Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. Stephon Diggs has a great game. So did Josh Allen. Stephon yeah. Diggs has a terrible game. That's all right. Josh yeah. Allen was great. I was gonna bring that up because I think without the kind of like back half of the year where Diggs struggled, if Diggs were to depart in this off season and you hadn't seen that, you would doubt. Sure. Yeah. But now I think you can have enough confidence to say that like Josh Allen is going to go as the quarterback one next year. 76% of the time it was a good game by our consistency metrics. 24% of the time it was a great game. Only 18% were bust games. And yeah, he he was the, you know, kind of the pinnacle of consistency at the quarterback position despite a year where look, he's still playing now. But I think a lot of people didn't expect that to be the case and they struggled. Um, you know, stealing the division at the at the very last hour. So, you know, yeah, I mean, whenever you have an offensive coordinator fired mid season, you, right? you you don't expect that it was a great offensive output. But Josh Allen, it, the the truth about the quarterbacks here is that these mobile rushing quarterbacks, if they play the whole season, are so valuable. Why? Because Josh Allen had fifteen rushing touchdowns, and that is a baseline. That is unfair to other guys. C.J. Stroud was awesome this year, but you can't compete with these mobile quarterbacks. That, and I don't think Josh Allen gets enough credit for the tush push. They do that. They do a single back tush push with Josh Allen, and so they they did that a lot. So one like a one cheek. Yeah, just a one cheek push to the left. Um, it's just what I, I couldn't find the rhyme. <laughs> one cheek squeak. No, no, no. <laughs> We're closer. No. We're co- no. warmer. Warmer. Work, work, workshop it, okay. but like keep it to okay. yourself. All right. But like, I'll be workshop back. Workshop it quick and come I'll back. I'll be back. Yeah, like 10 minutes. 
Josh Allen, 15 touchdowns. Jalen Hurts, 15 touchdowns on the ground, both of them. So, yeah, you 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 mentioned it. Both teams had struggles offensively at different times during the year, but these are your best two quarterbacks. And could have been even better. Uh, it was actually his lowest passing yards per game since 2019 at right around 253 yards per game, but he was number one in air yards, number one in 20-plus yard attempts. So had Sub-30 touchdowns So had, the air. had some of those you know, attempts hit more often, then it could have been even better. So I, it at this point in January, it feels really easy to say Allen will be locked in as the number one guy. Where he goes in the drafts, whether you're willing to make the pick, because like with all this information, we could end up with Josh Allen just going like second round, back of the second round, early third round. So that'll be I mean a discussion. For Mahomes day. went in the second round. Yeah, it, it, it so Allen probably me, goes in the so second. You asked me at the top of the show, like that. What did I learn that changed how I look going forward? And it's that Josh Allen is worth it. He he was worth it two years in a row, and so eventually he'll. You know, these these mobile quarterbacks, we saw it with Cam Newton, these big body mobile quarterbacks, they will fall off earlier. They're not going to play till 40 doing the same running style. But it hasn't happened yet, and I'm going to be fine taking Josh Allen next year. I now, hated I, that narrative in the offseason. I, I was opposed to it from the first mention, the idea that, that Josh Allen, less. that he would run less. It just didn't make any sense to I understand the eventuality, but I thought that that was something that had no chance of happening. You know, Jalen Hurts. Josh Allen, they are two of six picks that I looked at in the top 30 in fantasy as home runs. Yeah. There were only six players that were home runs. They they were 100% worth the pick and delivered huge, and two of them were quarterbacks. So yeah, it does say something. It also, in the something that will you know cloud how you think about things, is the second round this past year was a disaster. It was real bad. So... If when you have which it's just a one year uh, sample, but when you have when you're coming off of a second round, everyone was terrible. Josh Allen continues to be great. You're it, saying it might drive the cost it, up. Well, I'm saying it, it it's going to be difficult for it's me. Like I I don't want to draft a quarterback in the second round, but remembering how bad each draft went in the second, and you're like, oh, Josh Allen, that feels pretty locked in. Sometimes when you're when you just get a safe superhero. <laughs> it it feels good. And, yeah. and speaking of you know the superhero body he has, what about one cheek physique? Does that work? Is that better? Uh, but physique does not imply he's getting pushed yeah. from the back. Yeah, he has one cheek peak abu on the other <laughs> side. He's huh? Did we get there? <laughs> yeah, we got there. We got there. The one cheek peak abu. Got it. I, okay. You know, um, we, we they can, can't <laughs> all be winners. We can figure it out. I just need some more names for a singular butt cheek. I'm drawing a glute. One, the one, glute. one glute scoot. Oh, oh the one glute we scoot. Did. We got there. Yes. yes the I'm one right. glute scoot. Yes, sir. Sometimes it's just important that I'm quiet and let creativity. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let it, let it happen, yeah. man. This is why you're listening. The one glute scoot. The one glute scoot. Josh Allen. <laughs> they don't really push him on one butt cheek, do they? Well, yeah, they really do. He he's stronger on one side. He only needs help on one. <laughs> he usually goes to the left, and he wow. usually only has one back in there pushing. I mean, I guess the maybe glute scoot. I gotta go watch. Wow. I gotta zoom in and watch. I don't. I don't know, I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> Jalen Hurts is more of a discussion just because, like Mike said. I mean, if it comes out the injury, um, maybe you wash away some of the the struggle towards the end of the year. To be honest. The only thing that will really cast a shadow onto Jalen Hurts next year would be a fundamental change to his weapons, or they change the rule. Like if you, if mm -hmm. you, like Josh Allen just had a fifty-two yard run in this playoff game. Jalen Hurts, I do we have the number, Kyle, on how many of the fifteen touchdowns came from the one yard line? Because he was tw he had twenty three passing touchdowns this year and fifteen interceptions, which by the way was the exact line that Dak Prescott got criticized for last year. So let's just be fair about that. So just a a quick look, I'm seeing four touchdowns from inside the five for rushing. What per, per no? That's per I'm on game. Pass. I'm on per pass. game. Okay, yeah, that like, didn't oh, make that's, sense. That's not that right. Not, uh, thirteen. That's, yeah, thirteen of yeah, fifteen. Yeah. So um, Jalen Hurts' longest run this season was twenty four yards. Yeah, and he dealt with some injury. 
uh, knee injury for for a big part of the year that could have affected. I think he was around six hundred something yards on the ground. the The hand is, was a the hand was a problem in the playoff game. So, but the big point is is that he didn't end strong, right? And so that will I think impact the way people view Jalen Hurts going into fantasy drafts. Is he guaranteed to be your number two off the board? Yeah, he, for me, he's guaranteed to be my number two off the board. I think he might end up being a better value than Josh Allen. Uh, those two guys, I'm I'm fully fine w- with investing highly next right. year. They're, they're rushing touchdown baseline, and his weapons, I, I do think he was really, really, really banged up this year. For the most part, he was great. I mean, he's the number two quarterback, the number two in our consistency metric. He t- tailed off a little bit at the end, and obviously in the playoffs – they were was terrible. Yeah, the, the end of year numbers passing were were a struggle. You know, thirty eight hundred yards, sixty three percent of the time, good games, nineteen percent great, thirteen percent bust. I want to give those numbers for each player so you have a lay of the land. And one of the reasons why Mike says, "Oh, I don't want to draft a quarterback in the second round," but I might. I think by the end of the show, you might. Yeah, I think that's maybe. The, that's the story. Is that we'll find those two diamonds. guys were very consistent. But let's go to number three. Let's. I go was to, just just a real quick in case people are thinking it looking at AJ Brown's contract it seems just impossible that they can actually get move on from AJ Brown uh, not that they want to but just saying AJ Brown with his whole you know social media temper tantrum that's going to all those be- offensive weapons are back yeah yeah Lamar Jackson number 3 number 4 in consistency late third round draft pick was the number six quarterback in the first half of the year, number two in the second half of the year. Had two number one overall finishes in weeks 14 and 17. Uh, Jalen Hurts, how many number one finishes did he have on the year? Nope. On any individual week? Jalen Hurts? Correct. You're saying number one quarterback of the week? Yes. Yeah. Probably none? None. None. Yeah. Uh, Allen had two, and then Lamar Jackson had two. You know, his year, 38% of the time he busted. So this this is the the Lamar Jackson story that we're used to now. Since the MVP season, you can always start him and win your week because of him. Mm-hmm. There aren't a lot of quarterbacks where that is true. But you can also start him and get 18 for 27 for 157 yards and a touchdown. That's a thing. Like for Lamar Jackson, occasionally the Gus bus fell into the end zone three times. The defense stepped up. Um, you had a really bad run from weeks 8 through 12 where he was quarterback 28, 18, 16, 4, and 14. But you I, had, I believe that's the same stretch where uh, the Gus Bus Edwards, had yeah. 28,000 rushing touchdowns. So, that I mean, that was part of the storyline this year. I know we got to the point where Lamar Jackson became a start-sit question because other players were on fire. You know, it, it, whether it was Dak who was on fire, um, some of these other quarterbacks, Brock Purdy, those started be- to become discussions uh, part way through the year, but ultimately he ends up at number three. And and part of the reason he ends up at number three, number four in our uh, in our truth metric is, you know, his bust rate at thirty eight percent that feels really high uh, for a top tier quarterback. But as we're going through only the top ten finishing quarterbacks, there's not another one who didn't bust greater than 30% of the time. Like, everyone this year busted a lot, and that's that's what was so gross and surprising to me. The only two guys that didn't, that had a sub, like, 20% bust rate, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, that's it, and Joe Flacco. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Joe Flacco was 100%. He's such a – yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lamar, Lamar was better at home considerably, about five points per game better at home, something to maybe keep in the back of your mind. That was something that used to factor into – you know, Jared, Go- Jared Goff, Big Ben, yeah. Mark Andrews missed time this year, and he pieced it together with, you know, so that was his best a, a run. banged up Rashad <laughs> Bateman, Isaiah Likely, Zay Flowers, part parts of OBJ that still work. So ultimately, we know Lamar's an MVP caliber talent. I mean, we know that about Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes is that statement is still true of Mahomes of, you know, he's a player that if you started him on a given week, he could he could win you your week. He's capable of it. Uh, but this year, he kind of put to bed some of the red flags. He, he had the most starts of his career. He didn't get hurt. Um, he had a high, his highest completion percentage of his career, 67%. His hard, highest yards per attempt of his career with the new offensive coordinator. 
And so even though the first game of the year threw a lot of doubt into whether Lamar was going to help your fantasy team, you know, the next five weeks kind of erased that. Yep. Number four, fantasy quarterback this year, Dak Prescott, ended up tied for eighth in consistency. It was a tale of two halves for Dak, the 15th quarterback in the first half, the sixth ranked quarterback in the second half of the year. You know, part of that story that made it so wonderful is he hit waiver wires. Oh, yeah. I mean, he I was... Mean, after week five, he was on most of them. He was terrible through the first five weeks. Uh, and then um, I know there was a story about uh, CeeDee Lamb going to, I think it was at, at the bye week, going to McCarthy and basically demanding, like, the ball more. And it was like, yeah, guess what? That works. Throw it to your best wide receiver. Because those first five weeks were so, so bad for Dak. Dak is like the fantasy MVP this year for fantasy football, and, and he's tied for eighth only because those first five weeks. Yeah, he would have been significantly higher. And, you know, from week six on, in fantasy points per game, he was quarterback one. So Mike gave him a pep, pep talk. He sure came on did. the show. Mike said, go get him. I said, stop embarrassing me, Dak. And he went from 212 passing yards per game to 287 a game. Went from a touchdown a game to two over two and a half. And his quarterback rating, his 17-game pace – from week six on, 4,894 passing yards, 44 touchdowns. That's what we're talking about, McCarthy. And this is on a team that has had a – I mean, I know this last game, it didn't look like it, but their defense is pretty good. But they still got into these shootout opportunities. Pollard could not. He was allergic to the end zone. So, you know, Dak was one of the biggest stories in fantasy this season. Yeah, so, so now the question is, can you trust him going forward to air it out like this? What's his schedule? <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. 29% great games, 47% good, 29% bust. You know, the question for next year, I think Dak will, will be looked at like a value, a value opportunity in drafts. I feel like people are going to really potentially think, fall into overhype. You think they'll say thank you with an early pick? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I I do. Because I, it was so, so good. If if you take out those first five weeks from week six on, our our truth metric, he would have been the number two right behind Josh Allen. I, I we'll see. There there are yeah, quarterbacks that have played enough years, like Big Ben did this a few times, and people just threw him right back in the twelfth round. I I don't know why. But I, I will say this, Mike, you called the second half sleeper of Dak Prescott. Part of why you called that was because of the schedule. Yes. The the schedule was very bad for running backs the rest of the way, very good for quarterbacks, very good for wide receivers the rest of the way. And he and he dominated during that time. So I'm not I'm not convinced that he's just going to be great week in, week out the way that he was during that stretch that mattered for fantasy. Yeah, I, I agree. And um he'll be you know, if they have the same head coach, does that change? Because that's the play caller. So that'll make a big difference in how we view the season. Number five, Jordan Love. Mm, crazy. Yeah. Undrafted Jordan Love. His consistency rank was tied with Dak at eight. First half, he was the quarterback 14. Second half, quarterback seven. There's a lot of similarities between his and Dak's season. I think people probably got on the I'm willing to start Dak train a lot sooner than Love, but the results were very similar. 12% great game, so he didn't have a lot of those weak winning performances. But 47% good, 24% bust. I mean, it's crazy we're talking about him. It's crazy. But from week 10 on, so almost the entire second half of the year, you had Dak Prescott as the quarterback one, Josh Allen as the quarterback two, and then it was it was Jordan Love. I mean, he was super good. Unbelievable. I think Al's probably pretty happy about that. Yeah, he is. Oh, he's got such hey, a stupid you, smile. Yeah, he's got a little <laughs> grin on his face over there. I love being right. You just look stupid. <laughs> you love being... You had no choice. <laughs> I've got the receipts of me coming to yeah, uh, standing yeah. up for him and you guys all giving me a hard time. That's true. You also picked them to beat the Cowboys. I did. Which is so impressive if it wasn't for the fact that you will pick them to beat. I, yeah, I assume you, you're picking them to beat the Niners. I have the Niners taking it in my pool. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. He likes money more than fandom. <laughs> Rather win the pool? Wow, that's that's a betrayal. No, wow. It's, no, no, no. Not a real Packers fan, huh? It, it's just a bracket, not a pool. I'm sorry. Oh, there's no money on the there's line. There's no money on the line. Interesting. And he I would prefer the Packers. Hey, hey, I would prefer the Packers to win, but I so, did take the Niners. So if we make a bet right now, like a fifty dollar bet, mm. you'll take the Niners and I'll take the Packers? Yeah. 
Oh, because wait. he'll be happy anyways. Yeah. <laughs> he'll pay $50 that's, for a win. That's the happiness I forgot edge. that's the happiness <laughs> edge. Never mind. It's too late. No takesy back. I guess I just wanted it on record. He bet against his team. I, I think what is exciting about Jordan Love, and it is the opposite for the wide receivers, is how many good wide receivers are here now. Um, I, I talked about it when um, I think, oh, this was on the, the Dynasty episode this week. We talked a lot about Jaden Reed and his splits with and without Christian Watson. And I think that it's going to be difficult next year. Like, Jaden Reed was very, very good. But if you look when he was good and his splits with and without Christian Watson, they were dramatic. You're talking about an irrelevant player versus a super relevant player. If you've got a healthy wide receiver. Are you talking about Jaden Reed? Yeah. That doesn't bother me one bit. Sure, sure. But my point is, when you've got Christian Watson, if he's healthy and active, and Jaden Reed healthy and active, yeah, and, and Dobbs, Octavian Wicks and, and, Dobbs Wicks and, and all that, it's going to yeah. be hard to know necessarily which wide receiver to start, but they all go to Jordan Love. And so going forward, Jordan Love has, I mean, even Kraft and Musgrave, like he's got a great skill set of, of receiving options. So I, it gives me confidence in Love going Moving forward. Moving forward, yeah. No, it makes sense. All of those weapons, all those young home runs in the draft, the thing is, it's, it's just, it's kind of messed up. It's kind of messed up. What? <laughs> They're just, they picked a bunch of good ones. Yeah. For Jordan Love. Mm. Well, and, they and, and they couldn't, wait, I did not push that button, <laughs> so, but they couldn't pick them and didn't pick them for Rodgers for years. I don't know, man. Jaden Reed's the, you know, the road. Like, no, but no, they had, he had Christian Watson. And he had Watson Dobbs. was, Watson he had, was pretty he great. He had like. injured Watson and Doc. Yeah. If you use the word great with Dobbs last year, I wouldn't call him great. I'm just saying he had him. He had yeah. he had a lot of this. And he wide had a core. chance to make the playoffs in the last game and didn't, and Love did. So look, huge credit. Moving forward, I'd be happy with him in Dynasty. Um, by the way, that if you want the answer, Jaden Reed's the guy to play, just so you know. Like when they're all healthy, just play the superstar. I'm not worried about it one iota. He got schemed off the field against the Cowboys. Who who has him in our dynasty? Oh, God. Oh, shut, shut up! Shut mute, the hell up! Mute his uh, microphone. Mute, walk good. out of this set. What's your record in the dynasty this year? <laughs> number one pick. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah, number one. All right, we're moving on. Brock Purdy at six. Brock Purdy was essentially undrafted in a lot of leagues. Fourteenth round. Consistency rank of six for Brock Purdy. That says a lot. I mean, if you if you committed to him, you were in pretty good shape. 50% of the time it was good, 19% great, 31% bust. Some of the busts, they, they really hurt you, week six, week 16. You know, he didn't have all his weapons the entire year. I think that's important to note. Like, when he did, things were very, very good. You know, this was an MVP candidate uh, partway through the year. Debo, most of it. Most we, of the year, week, yeah. I mean, week 16, the Ravens uh, removed him from yeah. the competition. And, uh, you know... How are you feeling about the Brock Purdy experience and the experiment I, moving forward? Do you do you need him to be paid before you start recommending him as a dynasty no, star? No, he he is already established. He's fully legit. He's young. He's a dynasty star. I, I don't worry whatsoever about. I mean, they're going to extend him. I I believe this off season. It is a shame to see him making less than some college kids. Let me right just now. let me let me paint a different picture. The Packers, Al's Packers, uh, blow him out of the water this week. Purdy throws three interceptions. I'm a hundred based on everything that I've heard from Shanahan. He's their dude. He's their long term dude. I am fully the, convinced. The league changes quick. Man. It does. Um, no. Do you have doubts? Do you? Do you? I don't think that that's going to happen that, this week. But I think whenever you aren't being paid anything, and you have a team with this kind of expectation, odds on favorite to win the Super Bowl. If you flop in a big game. And Shanahan's had success with a million quarterbacks. Yeah, there'll be questions this offseason. I mean, the, the the Philadelphia Eagles just wanted to throw popcorn at their coach and tell him he's out of town for one loss. Yeah, that's Philly, so, though. I mean, we thought Jimmy G would be there. We thought Trey Lance would be there. We thought a lot of quarterbacks would be consistent yeah, longer-term options there. So I'm just bringing it up. I, I don't like that he's being paid nothing. Who would you rather have in Dynasty between Love and Purdy? Jordan Love. Really? Yes. Okay. I think Purdy. Is that because he's guaranteed to be a first ballot Hall of Famer by the end of his career <laughs> because of the witchcraft <laughs> happening in Lambeau? That's correct. The, oh. the, the witchcraft. I can't believe they've done it again. 
They better not have. It's not fair. Yeah, I mean, letting your first round quarterback sit and learn, it it can pay off. Yeah, I mean, if you it, have some patience. Worked for Andy Reid and Mahomes fit, yeah. sit that whole year. Uh, we've got Brock Purdy weeks ten through fifteen dominated twenty almost twenty four fantasy points a game two point eight passing touchdowns. You know when they have it going on offense, it looks really smooth. I mean, you when they have it going on offense, Purdy's given up snaps to Darnold at the end of the game because they've uh, blown out their opponents. I mean, when they had a full allotment of weapons, the points per game that they were averaging was insane. So, uh, impressive season by Purdy. Couple of dud games. Definitely delivered for fantasy players that got him for free. Mahomes finished seventh. No. Was drafted first. Oh. Had a consistency rank. You ready for this? 17. Gross. But it's very different between the first half and the second half of the year for him. And I think that there is a somewhat clear correlation that is somewhat scary to me. Go on. Travis Kelsey was very good in the beginning of this season. If you remember, yeah, he, was, he was. He seemed like. Man, that was worth that first round pick. And Travis Kelsey, by the end of the season, was a very poor pick. He was not good the second half of the year, and that correlated to Mahomes not being good the second half of the year. So I'm just saying, if Kelsey, if Kelsey has hit that drop off, not to being a bad player, he's still valuable. He's still good. I mean, Antonio Gates was very good the last three or four years from an NFL standpoint, but he was done being the dominant. Uh, you know, great fantasy asset, the league leader in yards and touchdowns. If Kelsey has graduated to that stage of his career, I don't know if the weapons are good enough for Mahomes gonna to be a something. superstar. I feel pretty confident that they're going to address it this year. Like they they had their success two years ago with, you know, I mean, I guess they, they technically they paid MVS a bunch of money and it didn't work out. And or it, it didn't work out for him to be a superstar. It worked out for the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. They thought, we can just re-roll this. We'll do it again. And I, I think they address it. Yeah, I mean, but what will fantasy players do? What will be the reaction? I mean, he was not a player worth starting over the last six, seven, eight weeks, and yet people did it every week because it was how do you, impossible how do you not, to put him on your bench. I yeah. mean, we had somebody in our league trade Lamar Jackson away to get Mahomes halfway through the year. Because the expectation was the inverse of this, that Mahomes would kind of keep going, yeah. keep improving with this group. I mean, Rashi Rice got better over the course of the back half of the year in terms of fantasy production, but there wasn't the Jordan Love effect. There wasn't this accumulation of, of five, six passing options that drove them forward. And let's be honest, they had a great defense. This was a problem. We said it at the beginning of the year when we started to see it come together. Like, when your defense is that dominant, you become Isaiah Pacheco. And yeah, and it was not just you go to the running game because you can go to it. It's no, Pacheco was fantastic. And they you know, last year it was it was gonna be Clyde and then Pacheco and Clyde was inefficient. They and then Pacheco steals the job and so I I think there's a chance that Mahomes is not like you know, locked in as elite for fantasy. He will always be capable of a forty touchdown season. Yes. But this year, six percent great, twenty five percent good, thirty one percent bust. Yeah, it was it wasn't good after his. They had a bye week in week ten. After that, he was the quarterback eighteen in points per game. He was behind Derek like Carr, behind Geno Smith, behind Russell Wilson, behind Jake Browning. I mean, he, fantasy he, managers. Uh, if you want a title with Mahomes, send you're us a an, liar. Send us a note. <laughs> No, I know you can. I, know I won you can. with this next guy. Jared Goff at eight. <laughs> yeah. He was behind Jared Goff through that stretch as well. Jared Goff was, I mean, he, the, was, he, he was, was fine. Yeah. He was. He was 10th in consistency, 7th in the first half, 14th in the second half. No, but here's, here is Jared Goff in just broken down as, as a statistical data point versus defenses. Top 16. 18 points a game. Bottom 16 passing defenses, 23, nearly 24 points a game. Home road splits. On the road, 17 points a game. At home, 24 points a game. So there is a sweet spot 
of when Jared Goff is at home, you feel like you can play him. When Jared Goff is at home versus a bad secondary home run, you're 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 very excited to play Jared Goff. Yeah, and he's always been better at home. Yep. He likes that controlled condition. Yeah, he does. I don't blame you, Jared. I don't know. The weather's pretty cold in Detroit. <laughs> Um, it, it was, a you know, I know a lot of you opted into Jared Goff on different weeks, 12% great, 35% good, 47% bust. I mean, it's a 50, 50 shot when you're throwing them out there. If you didn't factor in those variables, the home road splits and the opposing defense, the math was 50, 50 on whether Jared Goff would show up for you. And I feel like the way Mike played his quarterback roulette, it was about a 50, 50 on a given week, yeah. whether he came in here crying or satisfied with the result. I mean, the the snapshot of week 16 on the road against Minnesota, quarterback 23. Two weeks later, at home against Minnesota, the quarterback six. Yeah. That, that's, so, and that's that's who Jared Goff is. I think he continues to be that, which there is there is value for fantasy football. You, you got to be – you can't just plug and play Jared Goff and think that's going to work. I do think that – yeah, I, I think he, he has – if you had to decide, would, would he go to the negative side or to the positive side moving forward? I lean the positive side with the development of mm -hmm. Jamison Williams in that sure. offense, the electricity he brings to it. The development of Laporta. Laporta yeah. is such a, a key cog. So moving on, Baker Mayfield, which by the way, like the final four quarterbacks in the NFC right now are Jordan Love, Baker Mayfield, Jared Goff, and Brock Purdy. Wow, gross. Which is like... So you're saying not a lot of money. You're saying that Chicago should not draft Caleb Williams. I mean, they should build around Justin Fields. I don't know what I'm saying, Mike. <laughs> I'm just saying that if you like the the parlay to now hit, do the AFC. Yeah, the AFC. <laughs> I think I looked at the guaranteed money. It's about seventy million dollars of guaranteed money on the NFC side, and it's about three hundred seventy-five million dollars on the AFC side with I mean, Lamar, Mahomes, Jared, Allen, Goff, and Mayfield were the one hundred and one. So that they is, they were supposed to be that doing is that, this. That's true, but it's been a journey, Mike. Yes, this was not a they point were, A to point B. Neither were the one on one for this team. <laughs> <laughs> Correct, Baker Mayfield. I can't believe he's a top ten number. I love it. Number nine, but number twenty one in consistency. Oh, he was terrible for fantasy purposes. He was terrible. You couldn't have played him. I mean, he, there was one. That's week. the truth. The yeah. truth is, we should not be talking about Baker Mayfield. Correct. The truth is, move on. He wasn't even a good streaming option. Like he just accumulated a lot of points over the course of the season, playing a full season. And <laughs> congratulations for getting your team to I mean, the playoffs. That's great, but for fantasy, you're irrelevant. He also didn't throw a lot of interceptions. Twenty-eight to ten touchdown to interception ratio helps you out quite a bit. Four thousand passing yards. That was more than Jalen Hurts. Twenty-eight passing touchdowns. That was more than Jalen Hurt. Jalen Hurts. He had a great NFL season. Yes, he really but, did, but not a great fantasy season. And thirty-five percent bust rate. Six percent great. Twenty-four percent good. One game inside the top seven, or sorry, inside the top six. So playing him, he was a backup two QB type of quarterback. Yeah. And uh, he also helped out the Mike Evans managers quite a bit. And at number 10, Tua Tungavailoa. Man. Uh, I mean, this was the second straight year Miami had this happen, but the first half of the year, it looks like they are innovating. They're the most electric offense in the NFL. He was the quarterback four. In the second half, he was the quarterback 30. His consistency rank was 19, despite finishing at number 10. 12% great, 24% good, 53% bust. And he got you. That's <laughs> yes. the problem. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I got Mike got. held me personally like responsible no, no, it, for it his was, demise. It was, it's, it was my own doing, but it was Because I like, traded to him right before yeah. that that junk game. right right before the clock struck midnight on two is when i traded for him yeah i mean there there was a point you were going into like week nine week ten yes around there where he was locked in as an every week the matchup doesn't matter yep he's been so good had so many big performances you have to start him and he that was the problem of what destroyed you the rest of the season because you just kept rolling with him ah he'll bounce back ah the matchup's good yeah he's got Tyreek Tyreek it's yeah. the yeah. second year in a row that that was the mindset on to it for the second half of the year too yeah uh, fool you once he's, he is he is a slightly more fantasy productive Jared Goff I would agree because the 
offensive potential for him with Tyreek well, and Waddle and are, the splits, is so high. The splits are the same. Like he beats up bad defenses yep. and, and he wins at home. Yeah. Yeah, and and God forbid you start him when he doesn't have one of the weapons. That's also right. something that I just hated. Like when when you took Mostert away or you took Waddle away or Tyreek was banged up, they couldn't function properly. Obviously, I kind of went on a tangent about their performance against Kansas City because yeah, you were upset. honestly, like I I wanted to see them succeed. And I was just so disappointed in the the level of grit that they brought to the table and the game plan. And now they say they're they're going to long term him. I mean, they're yeah. going to save money after that performance. Tell you that. <laughs> well, those, the the offensive line injuries were huge, a big problem huge. for them. So maybe the season goes better if that those things don't happen. Yeah, I I don't know if this is going to be one of those players I'm just taking off the board for for my fantasy team. Yeah. I, that, that could be stupid. Because obviously, just like Goff, there are selective weeks where you'd want to play him. But he's also very painful to, like, to have on your team. In in drafts, you know, trying to keep this show evergreen for people, but like, who goes higher in fantasy drafts? Brock Purdy or Tua? Oh, Purdy. Yeah, sure? I think so. Yeah, for me, Will. Well, I'm, I'm not oh, saying, you're I'm saying not ADP. saying for us. You're I'm saying, saying the, the general public, when they come back. It's probably Tua. Because I think it's probably Tua. And I, Does I agree. Brock Party win a Super Bowl? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that might make a difference, but um, yeah, exactly, bro. Yeah, yeah, the playoffs, playoffs can make pick. a difference. Sure. Yeah, that they might be very close, but where is that? Is that eighth round? Yeah, I don't know. So uh, those are your, those are your top ten quarterbacks. All the data, all the truth information will be on the website as well, thefantasyfootballers.com, dot com in article form. And we will be digging in even more at uh, the quarterback position against Jason's will mm -hmm. on our next episode of the show. It's actually even more important. I mean, the the opposite of the fact that, yeah, dra draft Josh Allen or Jalen Hurts, the other side of that is or stream the position because everyone busted. You want to play the right matchups at the right home field or road game. And so we're going to take a look at the, the quarterbacks that are not necessarily – Every week, plug and play, but how do you play them? When do you play them? Why do you play them? And Mike would like me to remind you. Yes, I would. To go to footclanvote.com to do your duty. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.